All right, we're rolling. Um, what's going on, everyone? Nico here with the Wooden Spoon. Another episode of the Sit Down. Very special episode of the Sit Down. We're finally in studio, live. We're in Astoria, Queens, and I'm joined by actor Chris. Chris Mamunda. Mormando. Yes. Mormando. Mormando. Yes. Mormando. All right, I got. It. That's all right. <laughs> I know. I, I actually have uh, a present for you when we after we wrap. But um. Oh. Yeah. So wow. what's going on, Chris? Thanks for coming out to, Buddy, thank to Queens. Thank you for having me. I'm feel honored. Um, this is great. I love the studio. Yeah, it's my first time shooting here. I got. Yeah, I feel honored. Number one, just so first I'm the guest. First, guy. first guest. That's the way to do it. You know, yeah, you gotta do it. Sure. You gotta be number one, right? <laughs> for sure, man. Yeah. So how's uh 2022 treating you? 2022. It's a blessing of a year. It's my year. I say 2022 is my year because I'm about a. Um, if you watch me on the Instagram, I I talk about my me days. Mm -hmm. It's about today, I pick a day, I pick it just for me. So this year, it's 22. My mother's numbers were 222, two, two, so I always oh, say no. she's looking, and this is the year, 222. Two, two. But it's uh, it started off beautiful. It's progressing, and we're doing a lot of things right now and getting a lot of things started for um, a lot of filming this year. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to hear, yeah. awesome to hear. Yeah, so um, I guess for those who that really don't know you, let's like go through a little bit of your backstory, where are you from, all okay. that fun stuff. Well, we're from, from Brooklyn, New York. Whereabouts in Brooklyn? Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Awesome. Very awesome. Italian yep. neighborhood, uh, Italian-American neighborhood. We love and, Bensonhurst. Yeah, and um, it's, you know, it was never an easy neighborhood to live in if you really want to break it down. It was, uh, it was tough because you had very... Very straightforward regiment. And what I mean by that is, is that there was no, yeah, you could see it this way or see it that way. No, it's one way. Mm -hmm. And being from the neighborhood that I'm from and growing up the way I'm growing up, it made you into, you had no choice but to be tougher. You had no choice but to know the street. You had no choice on those things because if you didn't, then you're going to get eaten up out there. Yeah. But it was a beautiful neighborhood to grow up. A um, lot of family on every block, so which means I caught a lot of smacks in the head. <laughs> I was stepping out of line, even my own family. You had neighbors giving me cracks in the head, wooden spoons. Yeah, head, wooden spoons. You know. Hey, that's why the wooden spoon is perfect because my grandmother something my, like that right oh, i love it i got <laughs> in that spoon more than you could imagine well you could imagine yeah. you understand i could imagine you know what's funny is um we'll go to italian festivals obviously we'll sell the spoons and the shirts yes. and everything and my mom will come sometimes and they'll ask me because my mom's right there like did she hit you with the spoon and my mom's like never never happened yeah, and, yeah. I, and i just give her that look it's like yeah. come on mom yeah, no and the show she go like it was it was his nona who hit him with this like oh yeah sure mom when you get that smack, you're like, yeah. oh. she's listening right now. She's probably so pissed. Well, my mother's listening up there with my <laughs> grandmother up there, and I'm sure they're laughing, going, ah, oh, I should have gave more of a hit for, for talking about it. Yeah. But that's the way it goes, you know? And mm -hmm. it was part of the culture, part of the household that happened. Some families, they say, no, nobody ever hit us. Okay, that's great. Yeah. You know? You know, you know it's funny. I put a TikTok up, and I've seen you um, um, I'm popping up to, on TikTok I'm now. I'm TikTok. Yeah, I, I like your TikToks. So yeah, so yeah. I posted one. It was like, um, for, um, tell us your age without telling us your age. And I said something like, oh, yeah, we got just the shit kicked out of us growing up. And I said, and we deserved it. We totally deserved, like, just getting hit with a wooden yes. spoon or anything. And I had a comment. It was the funniest thing. And this lady said, she goes, yeah, she must have been, like, in her late 30s or okay. something. She goes, yeah. She goes, I just got out of prison. And I told all the girls in there, none of you hit harder than my mom. And I go, that's, that's well, there little... you go. There <laughs> you go. And she knows. She was yeah. in prison. She knows. <laughs> And it's no joke. The mothers were no joke. My mother, rest in peace, she was no joke. She'd love me to death, but step out of line growing up, and you caught a crack or two or yeah. three or four or five. You mm -hmm. know, She was not afraid to do that. But again, it was about the levels of respect. And I think a lot of those levels went right out the window. It's true. You know, and said to say, but a lot of those levels did. But, you know, you're hoping, you hope that you could put on camera and that you could see that you could bring it back somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. um, explaining or educating, how about that? Not just on regiment or, or giving a, a beating or two. I'm talking about the lifestyle and the culture and how it was to grow up in a Bensonhurst Brooklyn family house, Italian-American house. You know, a lot of people get the, the, the different perception of what it was like, and not everybody really knows unless you, only, unless you grew up and then sometimes you watch it on film and you go, all right, that, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you say, well, whoever wrote it, I don't think they know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's just for Hollywood or just for film. And, you know, you sit there and go, okay, next time I'll do it or I'll yeah. do it the right way and s explain it the right way, you know. 
For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah so you're growing up in uh, in Brooklyn, and yeah. then... Uh, so, you, grew up in Brooklyn, um, went to, got involved with neighborhood stuff, um, grew up a certain way, didn't like school, I was not a school person. Mm -hmm. Still hate school. I uh, know kids, don't listen to those <laughs> words. I'm not a school person. But got jammed up in life, and I did time in prison, I did five years in jail, and... It's not about doing the five years in jail. It was about realizing that what am I going to do now when I get home? Mm -hmm. And that's what led me into filming and acting. I always wanted to do it my whole life, but it was really never, it was, you, you never had your family members say, oh yeah, do it. They'd say, mm -hmm. ah, it's never going to happen. That was the bad thing about living in my home. Yeah, They weren't so encouraging on taking a chance. Mm -hmm. It was, no, get a job and you're good and you... That's it. Yeah. I think at the at the end of the day, I think that like that all kind of comes from love though too. They just want you to be secure and yes. just um and just not have to worry because there was different worries that our ancestors had of just like having like a shelter like That's shelter, correct. food and That's like your right. health. So now that we live in a society where a lot of the they're much more accessible, I think. Now it's Absolutely. where we go after and our it dreams. It was out of love and it was out of being afraid for their children. I have two daughters. I want to make sure and I want to see them successful. If they say they want to go, you know, run backpack the, the whole country, I'd sit there and say, okay, great, but what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you got to try and figure out what you want to do or take your shot, but take your shot now. Mm -hmm. And in, when growing up, I always wanted to be an actor, but it wasn't that way. It was not encouraged. So it was get a job, but then it was my lifestyle. So when I got jammed up and went to jail, now it's come home time. Yeah. And what do you do when you come home and you have no money? You have the felon under your name. You have a bad rap sheet. So people read, they this, they could make their own assumption or perception of what and who you are. And that's not easy. No, I know. I've, I've, I know some very, very close people of me that have went through that same situation. It's like, yeah, I, I still have like my college degrees and everything. I go to get a job and like I get to the final step and they're like, we can't hire you. Yeah, absolutely correct. I actually did. Here's how I got started in the film business. So I went for jobs, sales jobs. I was very good at being a salesman. Mm -hmm. So I go to do certain telecommunication jobs and I was kicking ass in my life doing it. This was, remember, I had committed a crime. I paid for my crime, but after I finished my crime, I was working as a sales group in telecommunications. Mm -hmm. Kicking ass, making bank a whole nine, and then got caught up, went, did my time. When I came home, I go back to try and get interviewed, and I'm more than qualified for these jobs. And I remember everybody going, yeah, we found somebody more qualified. And I'm like, you typed up, you, you Googled, you, you made your own thought process. Until the last time the guy told me, I got, you got the job. So I'm like, really? He goes, you got it. The guy from Denver is going to be coming in next week. You'll meet him. He's going to love you like I love you. You'll run the entire sales division. You're good. This was a Friday. I go home. I tell my wife and we're eating dinner and she goes, what do you think? I said, well, he's the only one that maybe didn't Google <laughs> or didn't know I had a past and it's not that it was a bad pass. It was just what you take as an Italian Americans and it's not fair. And all of a sudden I get the call and I looked at my wife and I call, I pick up and he says, we're sorry, but he told me the truth. Mm -hmm. So I can't get mad. He, I said, let me, let me guess, you found someone more qualified. He goes, no, <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I Googled and there, blah, blah, blah. And you did time. And I said, if yeah, that was a while ago, so I looked up, I looked up at the, you know, the ceiling and I went, all right, so you don't want me doing telecommunication or being a salesman. You want me to do what I always wanted to do. And I'm going to learn, I'm going to listen to it. And then I joked around, I go, and I hope I heard right. <laughs> and then I started. And truth be told, you see, you got, this guy's got a beautiful set of hair. <laughs> I got none. I always wanted hair. And the woman who found me, her name is Eve Battaglia. I did a little scene for the New York Film Academy in New York City. She walked through, she watched it, and she said, who's the effing bald-headed guy? <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm working with a Netflix show called Lilyhammer. I'm yep, in Norway. Yep, with Steve Van Zandt. Steve Van Zandt. Steve Van Zandt is the first guy who gave me my real first job for talent 
because I had done something with National Lampoons, but it was through a friend, which can't argue it. But the real talent started with Lily Hammer and Netflix. And next thing I know, I'm in two episodes. I'm in Norway. And it was because of the hair. And she goes, I wanted the bald headed guy. <laughs> so that's where it started. And then started building relationships in the business. And, you know, doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. on, you know, on a regular now. That's so cool. That's that's an awesome story. It's so... um. It's like almost like, yeah, you, it's like, it's a, it's what God wanted at the end of the Amen. day. It's so cool. I'm very spiritual. So I believe that mm -hmm. I believe that. And that's what I'll always tell. So when people say you were lucky, I say, no, I was blessed mm -hmm. and see the difference how I say it. They call it lucky. I call it blessed. I say blessed first, then call it lucky. Yeah. Cause you know, you need all of it in, in mm -hmm. this business. Yeah. But obviously you worked hard too. You did what Amen. you, you did what oh, you had yes. to do when you were given the opportunities, which is very important. Prep work. Um, a big, huge compliment. I'm on a show right now called Gravesend that we're filming. Yep, with uh, Will, William DeMeo. William DeMeo. Will is phenomenal. Um, we are in season two right now. And greatest compliment, one of, one of the greatest compliments was Armand Sande, mm -hmm. who played in... John Gotti. Oh, and even like we joke around with his voice when he goes, look around you, Frank, right? <laughs> I mean, you could be successful and have no friends. That's that's one of my favorites. And he paid a compliment to me and said, I'm a big, huge fan of you. And when I got that, I was like, wait, what? And he saw all my work. He saw work that I haven't seen. <laughs> I haven't seen my work on Gravesend yet because mm -hmm. it didn't come out yet. Him being pop, saw, seen it, you know, saw my work on set, off set, and prep was a big thing. So when he gave me that compliment and I heard others, they're like, your prep work is second to none. You prepare. And I don't believe in anything other than that. You have to prepare. And that's why when you are filming, I don't believe in going out the night before. I don't believe going out that same night after you're done. No, it should be focused on your work because you could never have enough ways of doing a scene, even if it's as simple as just sitting at two chairs mm -hmm. or a couch in a chair. You still have to know your person, the person you're, you're filming with. Study them, learn their their deliveries and all that. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, in the work that I do, I take it very serious. Mm -hmm. So yes, I prepare like no other. I feel mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just important, not only in acting but in any yes, any profession for sure. I agree. Yeah. You have to prepare. So what's it like? Because Gravesend, it like there's so many people that you see as like I know that guy, I know that guy. Especially being Italian American, okay. you see big time Tommy roll through. Love him. We've had Paulie Melanaggi on the podcast Love before. Him. Paulie, yeah. Paulie rolls like all those guys. William Demay. They're great. <laughs> they are all great. Um, working with all of them and being a part of we say La Familia, right? Mm -hmm. The family. It's so beautiful because it is exactly what you hope it to be. Yeah. Okay, is that better answer? You you want it to be a certain way. You start liking or or loving a, a character on a show. You're hoping that when you ever meet them, if you meet them, they are exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're on the set, that is as close of a family as you can get. And this group, this group, and I say from A to Z and Z to A. So it's not just the actors; it's everyone on this family. It's it's unreal from everyone mm -hmm. there's no one to be left out i mean from the hair to the producer to the grips to director assistant director actors makeup everybody just everybody wardrobe it's just great everybody is great and it's that great so when you're on the set Smiles are from ear to ear. You don't want to leave. Now, what's it like? Because uh, Gravesend's obviously based in Brooklyn, pretty yeah. much your hometown. So, what was like? What was it like? How did you get the the role for Gravesend? Okay, so Will DeMeo, Will was doing season one, and I was doing. I was on a show called For Life with Fifty Cent mm -hmm. on ABC. So we had season one and season two. So I was locked in. So I couldn't um, be involved with season one for um, Gravesend. But I was a big fan of what he was doing. I love that he's bringing Brooklyn back on the map, that mm -hmm. he's promoting. Bro I love it. it. There is nothing to figure out. I love it. He is so old school and he's so um, about Brooklyn. It's a beautiful concept. So what happened was I had talked to him 
while I was still filming. And he said, bro, do me a favor, leave open. I want you to be in season two with me. And I'm like, yes, just, and I never forget, I said, just give me dates. Mm -hmm. Cause once I commit, I will not take other jobs. I will, cause I know this role was gonna be a bigger role. He was writing it for me. And my character is a character that just comes home from jail and it's his really, it's his loyalist and it's his, one of his guys, but it's a guy that sits right by him. is always with him. So it's perfect <laughs> is what it is because that is me. Mm -hmm. It's not using the, the neighborhood style that we do. Just using, if I'm your friend, I am your friend. And if you're not my friend, that's on you. Mm -hmm. And that's why this role is perfect because it's not even really acting but it's a lot. It's it, there's a lot of work involved with this. Where the character role plays very big, and working with everybody, as I was saying, from Amanda Sante to William Forsythe to, Bo, I I know you know Bo Deedle. Bo mm -hmm. is one of the friggin' funniest and the <laughs> best guys ever. I mean, when we're on set, okay. So here, when we're on set, me and Bo, I sometimes cannot. Look him in the eyes because I'm going to start laughing because he's always going to look at me and go, Gaetano. And I played Gaetano on the film, on the show. And it's just when he's there, it's just he'll look and I go, stop looking at me like that because you're going to make me laugh. He is great. Um, from Vic DiBetetto. Yep. Vic, phenomenal. Big time Tommy. Leo Ross. I mean, there's nobody. I don't want to leave anybody out. There's just a ton from everybody in the show but when we're on set there's a lot of laughs i i could imagine oh. well you guys had dice on dice yeah dice oh is okay so my trailer was here dice's was connected when we filmed a, a scene in miami and we were on the beach i actually had to think of this is a true story i had to think of my god forgive me for this my grandmother laying in her casket <sighs> Because if I didn't think of that, I would have started laughing. Of course, Dice is going, hey, hey Richie. Hey. And he's doing his thing. And I'm going, oh, my God. And then Will, one take, left. And I go, no, you don't understand. If you left, I'm ruined. <laughs> so here I am holding an umbrella, and I'm staring at Dice. And I'm going, oh, my God. I got to stare at something that I can't hear him. Bro, it was that funny, okay? <laughs> and then we had windstorms going, like, like you can't make this up. There was a time when all the seagulls, the birds, we were walking, and Dice goes like this. He goes, and we see him getting his head turned. <laughs> he goes, what's with all the birds? <laughs> uh, are they part of the scene? <laughs> and we, we, that was it. It took us about five minutes, 10 minutes, to have to get that out of our heads <laughs> because I'll start cracking the fuck up. I know. Well, and so, it's just too funny. I don't think I could like be next to him and not think of like just the nursery rhymes. Cause I love, cause I'm a huge stand up comedy fan. Okay. Like, like I bring up dice to people and like some like kids my age, like, or even they don't know who he is. Like he's iconic. He's like, he's the guy who sold out Madison square garden before anybody. Exactly. And you know, what's great. You know where he became one of my favorites again? Because remember, he went from dice to then, okay, like anybody else, you take a break. When he got back on the show, which is one of my favorite all-time shows, Entourage. Oh, I love Entourage. Okay, when he came back on that show and he said that line, he goes, come on, Andrew. He goes, you you sold out Madison Square Garden with just a mic. He goes, yeah, but now you, now you got me playing an orangutan. <laughs> when he started... Because he kept it real with his own. He's insane. And listen, Dynamite. And he plays a phenomenal part in the show. I mean, kicks butt. And I just saw him the other night in the show, Pamela and Tommy. Oh, I started watching okay, that show I too. Watching too. He play, and I, I'm sitting there with my wife going, he's eating his ice cream. And I'm like, I, I love it. I said, this is nice, mm -hmm. you know. This is nice. I know. Shout out. I saw, um, we're supposed to have a guest on the podcast soon, Leo Dottavio. He's from The Bachelor and he does okay. a lot of E2 stuff. He had like just one quick scene in that in that show where he basically just took a robe off. That show is took insane. Took a robe off? Okay. Yeah. So shout out Leo Dottavio. Hey, shout out Detroit because there's never, there's no such thing 
as any small role or small part. Mm-hmm. When you're a part of something, this is what you want to do. It's it, it it's it's so being it's. I can't say the word. I'm as proud as could be when I say there I am that you could actually see me, hear me, and I'm in the scene. Or I say yeah, that was me in the background. Mm-hmm. I'm still a part of it. Yeah, everything. I mean, I mean every detail counts with any like any yeah. art form or anything. It's like That's right. you're only as strong as your weakest link. Your every detail counts. And you know who was a big mentor that taught me a lot about this when I was on ABC for Life. The lead of the show, his name is Nicholas Pinnock. So my wife will crack up whenever we talk about this. I, it's my wife is from Staten Island. You would never even know she's from New York. She, her, she has a different accent. <laughs> she has no clue about like certain, um, let's say, w- w- industries or, but, but a speech pathologist could w- w- literally wipe the floors with me with anything with education. Mm-hmm. But we're laughing and she goes like this. I'm watching 50 Cent and Nicholas there on a show. And I see Nicholas, and he's got his legs folded, and he's, uh, you know, when I met Curtis, and I was really old, and he starts talking with this accent. I go, what the hell? What is he doing? <laughs> so she goes, what do you mean, my wife? She goes, he's from London, England. I go, he's not from London, he's from the Bronx. <laughs> she goes, babe, he's from London, England. I go, babe. I just did a seven-day straight pilot with him. You don't think I know I'm with him 24-7? She goes, he's from London. And I go, all right, moron. He's from the Bronx. She goes, idiot. We punch it up, and I go, all right, I'm the moron. He's from London, England. I never knew it because he stayed he's in He's character. Oh, my God. That's incredible. So his prep work was everything I believe in. And Nico, he would say, he goes, Chris, it's about the energy, how you attract people. You, you, people will manifest, you'll manifest things in, your your universe will talk to you, whatever it is, he goes, I am a guy that will show you, and he started teaching me things, so when we were on the set, he used to always say, there's no such thing as a small role, small part, and I was the only driver on that show, so which means every time that bus moved, so there was 23 episodes. You played a correct, uh, correctional bus. I was the correctional bus driver, Mm -hmm. but I talked nine episodes, and I'm in 16 of them. Mm-hmm. So that meant seven more. I did not speak. So yeah, but I drove that bus. Well, P.S. We used to laugh whenever I used to drive the bus. Every time we said cut, we would sing. And he goes, see. Then when they when the, the episodes came where he came out of jail, well, there really was no bus needed. I, however, of course, production liked it. They got me off the bus. They put me in the in the the actual jail. Mm-hmm. So you see, you never know. How people look at things when you have the right attitude or the right way about it. Prepare. You're not, a, you know, you're not taking it non-serious. And then people go, no, we could use him. Take him off the bus, put him in the booth. Next thing you know, he's pulling up in his car. He's a lawyer coming up to the booth. And who's he talking to on the foot in the show? It's awesome. Me. And he was a huge part of this. And then there were so many other guys and girls that helped along the way without a doubt. To this day, mm-hmm. you know, to this day, tons. And it's about the relationships you keep and the energy levels and all that. It's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Well, you made a connection with 50 Cent too, right? Man, the first time I ever did it, the rapper Pop Smoke, Welcome to the Party. All right, so when 50's first part comes on, he's getting on the bus. And this is the greatest part. He gets on the bus and they edited the part in. The edit was Pop Smoke song and he's coming on the bus he gets in, he sits down next to the main character, Nicholas, mm-hmm. and he's there just to terrorize him. Okay, now let's go behind the scene. Cut. Everybody's off the bus. They come, they go, Chris, you want to go back to your trailer? We'll take you back to your trailer. I go, nah, I mean, I could kill us. I'll sit in the bus, do the camera changes. I'll hang out a half hour, no big deal, mm-hmm. hour. Nicholas goes, Nicholas goes, I'm going to stay with Chris. And 50 goes, you know what? Screw it, I'll stay with them too. Now, that's a big wow right there. Because mm-hmm. he could have been, this is my show, I'm going to go back. Yeah, I have 80 million things to do, which mm-hmm. I'm sure he does. He goes, nah, I'll hang out. So here I am on the bus. We're shut down. He's sitting right here next to me on like where the uh, the handle is, right? Okay. Or like the, 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 the right where like the all the, the dashboard is, I should say. So he's sitting over there. Nicholas is right behind me. And... We're talking, all of a sudden he goes like this, and he goes, 
Yo, Chris, I know I got you playing a cop and all, but uh, I ain't got you for a cop. <laughs> so Nicholas goes, let's just say he sat on this side of the bus for years. <laughs> and I go, hey, we all make mistakes. He goes, I ain't judging you. <laughs> See that? That was unreal. Now, he ain't my best friend. We don't pick up the phone and like, hey, what's going on? Where are you? But the fact that he just said that, you know, that's real to me. You know what's interesting about that is like somebody of 50 Cent who's multimillionaire, incredible business, amazing. that's an ama- amazing performer, yes. everything, how he treats you knowing that information versus the HR departments at some of the telecommunications. You, go. you know what? How can I? Re- you're right. 100% right. And here he is that he is the show. Mm-hmm. They know he wasn't the lead, but this is the show. He made the show. And I still say, oh, he's got, I wanted that show not to, not for the work. I wanted it to go more. Even if I wasn't involved, I wanted him in it more. Mm -hmm. Because he plays perfect. He plays it perfect. And he was great as the character he played was perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, you know, everybody moves on and I hope to work with him and he's the BMF. I love the show. So I'm always like one, but give me for instance. I've been in over 40 something different, over 40 th- different shows in, in film. And I don't have a rep or an agent. Really? Really. Never did. This is where I wish someone could reach out and say, hey, Curtis, remember him from there? Now, BMF season two. Do you have something for him? Because you're going to need the Italian mafia in the show, because you have the black family, uh, black mafia families. That's what the way that BMF stands for. But you're going to need the Italian mafia families mm-hmm. in there. So now we're in, we're talking in the 80s. Put a wig on me. It's all right. <laughs> I'll go for it. I got the old comb over. I can grow a little bit out. Don't laugh. I like your hair. Just a little. But it's, those are the things. And that's how everything, but you're, I'm doing different films right now. So mm-hmm. we have the show. I'm doing now my company. This is the, the, the most recent I have a production company called No Curfew Productions. And No Curfew is going to be doing their first full feature in June. We're looking to pull, probably call action in June. It'll be my first full feature um, for my production company. Yeah. This is one that I wrote nine years ago. Really? That's how long it took because I wasn't ready until now. And to have the executive producers that felt they would back me, um the production companies that are on board with us to sell it, to produce it, to get it out there. Um, so we're doing that. We're in the stages right now of pre-production that basically goes live. Pre-production will be official on Tuesday, February 15th. And then we'll hopefully pull the trigger. To awesome. Say Congrats. Soon. Yeah. Thank you. Any, uh, anything you could reveal about the story? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's going to be, it's a neighborhood type genre story, but it's not going to be your typical one. It's going to be a spiritual side. I'm a very spiritual mm-hmm. person. And when you, if you've ever had a time in your life where you don't remember why you feel a certain way, or you wake up and say, was that a dream? Did that happen? Wait, what do you mean? I Did I speak to some? Well, there's a lot of things. And if you ever watch like, it's a wonderful life. Mm-hmm. Every All Christmas. Right. Every Christmas. And I cry every Christmas. When you're watching that, at the very end, he now is back. And you wonder, wait a minute. Is it real? Oh. Is he delusional? Is he drunk? Did it really happen? But then at the very end, when the little girl goes, see, Daddy, every time an angel gets his wings, a bell, a bell yeah. rings. And he goes, that's right. And then all of a sudden he opens the, the little book, Thanks for the Wings. Mm-hmm. See, that clarified that there are other things out there. And that's what this film is going to give you a, so a cool. sense of is, wow. And it's going to be, see, I get a chill and I'm getting a little choked up. And I wrote it. Mm-hmm. And I get choked up because it's so family oriented but yet it's not no um you know everything is hugging kisses mm-hmm. it's going to be a neighborhood type genre but spiritual side so it's going to give so cool. something that's not been seen and it's going to be very very interesting to see the full edit 
on how it plays because it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to play out fantastic. That's so cool. It's so exciting because I can't even like, because you were like the ground up, you're going to see every single part of it, which yes. is cool. Yeah, from start to finish. And then again, it's part of the journey. I mean, I'm going to be 52 in March. I'm a young, I'm not young. I am young. It, you're young. Yeah, I'm young. Everyone's young. Everyone's young because it all depends on where how you, you feel. are. Absolutely. And that's... And I'm going to turn 26. My, my mom tells me, Nico, you're 26. Like, I don't think I've ever, like, turned 17. <laughs> I had my first daughter at 26. So, you know, it's My mom had me at 24. So 24. I tell her, I was like, you were insane. Why the hell would you have a kid at 20? <laughs> I guess times are different back then. Yes. But. And you know what? Wouldn't change it for the world. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And No, it's cool because my mom was always, like, the young, cool mom. So, that's cool. Which is, which is always that's nice. That's great. What was it in uh, the movie with... Uh, Lindsay Lohan, the Mean Girls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but there's a lot of great, a lot of great things. Yeah. Going on. So what's it like going back to Bensonhurst now? Like, what's the perception? Like, is I mean, I'm sure the neighborhood's obviously changed. Yeah, changed big time. It's sometimes a little, little sad mm-hmm. because I don't see anything that I'm used to. You see, like I go back to my own block, my old block. I see. The houses have all the rails over the windows. You know, things are boarded up. And I'm like, oh, this is my grandfather built this house. And you start going into it. But you understand that just times have changed. Yeah, I mean, same thing back home. And like, I'm from Niagara Falls. So you okay. go through like where like my Nona's house was and everything. And it's, it's Niagara Falls is in a rough, rough shape. I've never been there. Yeah. Don't, never been there. The Falls is obviously gorgeous to go You're see. You're a Buffalo the, Bills fan? Oh, big time. Yeah. I feel for you on that loss. I know. What are you going to do? I know. Listen, I, I get it. I know. It's I mean, it's looking up. You know what's funny? I saw something that said great team. In, the, in the late, I forget the exact years, but they lost the AFC championship back in the 80s. Then they lost the divisional round. And then the next four years, they went to the Super Bowl. And it looks like that same thing could possibly play they out. They deserve to be there. Mm-hmm. They are a phenomenal team. It's just... You know, you can't explain how they lost that game. No, I mean, at the end of the day, defense wins championships. People are trying to argue, like, the rule now, but it's like, guess what? Next week, the Bengals yeah. showed up, which I'm, I'm, I'm rooting so hard for the Bengals. It's, <laughs> it's such a great one because you're looking at a Matthew Stafford who suffered his whole career. He's mm-hmm. there now. They, the Rams put everything in on them. I'm happy for Matthew Stafford, yep. but I'm ecstatic for this Joe Burrows. Oh, my God, Joe so Burrows. <laughs> this kid's ah. got, he's got something. I root in. But and, you know what it is? It's, I want it to be just as good as all the games have been. Oh, yeah. For, I know. Great. Incredible, incredible. Great. Are you uh do you like do you bet on the games at all? Or? Yeah, that's the that's the the funny part. That's why I say is who who do you ask me like if you ask me who do I want to win? I want whoever wins me my money yeah. and whoever the box pools fall in on. Yeah. Because if I need Stafford to throw a touchdown to win my box pool, I'm gonna be yeah. a Stafford fan. I know. And if I need an interception, I'll be a Bengals defense. That's why I always try to, especially for the Super Bowl, I just play small bets here and there. I gotcha. I, I try to win all my money before the game even starts. I'll bet the national yeah. anthem and the oh, co- and the coin the toss. Coin toss. Yeah. I've lost years. I, I'm always tails. I I bet tw- I put 20 on tails okay, this year. Okay, and I've lost. There was one time tail heads came out four years in a row. Oh, my God. And you know what you say, right? It's 50-50. Yeah. I'm just a loser. <laughs> Every year, it's, I just can't. I wouldn't change it. And then all of a sudden, I think four years later, it came out tails. Yeah. Oh, man. So I'm like, you see, you just got to run with it. Whatever it is. I know. It's funny because I'll bet. I like betting the national anthem for some reason. For some reason. Time, yeah, the I'll time on the answer. So I'll start going. <laughs> It's funny because I'll post it on my Instagram too. I'll like start DMing whoever's singing, <laughs> trying to get the edge. But yeah, I remember last year somebody put a video out of the rehearsal, and I got and I saw it for some. I'm I'm very lucky. Like I'm yeah. the guy to go to the Chinese auctions and walk out with the baskets. Uh, I, I know I'm lucky. Like my dad says it over and over. He's like, you're just blessed. you're just blessed. lucky. You're just lucky. So I, I obviously see this video like right when it starts to go viral, and I just like lay in my bets on the time. That's it. Hey. That's the way to That's do it. Yeah. You just got to do it. You get the edge. Yeah. So what do you got going on? So, I mean, obviously you got the movie. So what, yeah. You, so the movie is the next thing I'm doing. We're finishing up. Well, Gravesend. We're gonna finish up in Brooklyn in March. You got to come down. Oh my God! I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Absolutely. I'm totally I'll be in touch there. You and let you know. Um, we we are filming up and we're gonna be finishing up in March. I think again, I'm not on the inside, so I can't. I'm a main character, but I'm not on the production side. Mm-hmm. I'm believing, I think, June it's going to air. I don't know where. Oh, that's pretty quick, yeah. though, right? We've been filming this, though, 
for um, about nine months already. Mm-hmm. So we had a lot of episodes. I believe it's going to be eight episodes. But the William, first se- the first season's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, yes, its first season is on Amazon Prime. But like even using an example, Will DeMeo, William. Now William, and I'm not just saying it because we're here. He knows it. He has given so many people their shot. Mm-hmm. Remember, he's been doing it since the... the Supra- yeah, well, before I mean, the Sopranos. Before too. the Sopranos. Uh, Bronx Tale. He, well, he was yeah, in Bronx. he's the... Him, him and Peter Gordio, because Peter is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Him and Peter Gordio, they are in the very beginning of a Bronx Tale when the girls pull up at the... And they go, any room in there for us? Oh! And Gordio, and that's where Shut you're up. There. Oh my God, I'm going to have to go through and watch yes. it. And the one that says, any room in there for us? Is Peter. <laughs> and Peter, we film together all the time. <laughs> So he plays. Uh, that's that's my that's my favorite movie of all time. I love a Bronx Tale. A Bronx Tale is. You know what's yeah. funny? We're in Astoria. That was filmed in Astoria. That's so cool because I remember I went. I googled it the one day because I wanted to like see like some of the sites and stuff. So I walked down. Well, Chaz Chaz is a, is a friend of mine um, and his wife Gianna, and his daughter Gabriella is in our show. Oh really? So Gabriella cool. Gabriella is in our show. Um, she is. Um, He's got talented kids because I know Dante. His son is yeah. a very good, a good and when musician. When I used to go to their home back in the day, they were babies. <laughs> and then when she showed up at the set, but I know her mom very well too. And I'm like, I'm like Johnny. She's like Chris. And I'm like, oh my god. And then when C and I go look at her, she's a a your woman, that young woman. Yet she was a baby then. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking like when the Gotti movie had first started. This were when chairs were going to be a part of it. This was back in. Oh eight, oh nine. So mm-hmm. we're talking 12, 13 years ago, or maybe in oh nine, and you're talking about, you know, she's what twenty years old. She was eleven, <laughs> you know, or twenty years old. I should say nine. So she was going back to not realizing if that was real life. The past ten years just flew by, right? Flew. <laughs> I know it's funny yeah. to say like two thousand six wasn't five years ago. Two thousand. I came home in oh five. Mm-hmm. So I'm home seventeen years. Yeah. And it'll be 17 years that I'm home. But when you think about it, I go, holy cow, I'm home 17 years. Mm-hmm. You know, but as soon as 2000 hit, I was like, Ugh. you know, here we got to start. We got to go into it, mm-hmm. get done and get home and then figure out. And again, very blessed because when I made the decision to do this, I never look back. I am so proud, so blessed to do this work. I love every minute of it. You know, this is a business that that is tops. You know, tops to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming down. It's truly like an inspiring, very inspiring story. It's a I really, pleasure. And it's I really, my pleasure, and it's an honor. That yeah, I guess. Honor. Guess last thing is just I always like ask my guests, but what advice would you give like somebody who wants to get in the industry or somebody who yeah, wants best advice? Anybody tells you you can't, tell them afangu, okay? Afangu <laughs> to them. If they tell you you can't, or they say, oh, you know, it's a hard business, say yes. But nothing is easy, okay? Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Don't ever think. And this is not a cliche. I speak this. You have one life. You got to do for you. And I even say this as a parent. I do not even know my true, my daughter's true talents. I am their dad. So I believe I do know them, but only they know their true talents. What you do, what I do is on us. And nobody would have ever known that I could do what I'm doing unless I took that shot. So don't ever, don't, don't shy yourself. Don't do something and say, I'll, uh, I'll get around to it. If this is something that's earned that, that you want to do, do it now. Take the shot. You know, that's what I tell everybody. Don't wait because you don't know what tomorrow brings. Do it now. Wow. That's it. And I get very excited on that. So I even tell the kids, I tell grownups, does it matter? Do it now. What are you waiting for? You don't know. I buried people two weeks ago, four weeks ago, a month ago. Doesn't matter. They, If they didn't take a shot, they don't get the chance. Mm-hmm. You, I, we have the opportunity to do what we're doing right now. Do it. Awesome. Very, That's very well said. Anyone. Awesome. Well, I don't think I could top anything else on top of that. But, um... Yeah, man. Thanks so much for coming Thank down. For me, yeah, guys. I'm excited yeah. to maybe come down to the set. Oh, or... Without a doubt. Yeah, without awesome. Doubt. Well, he'll be, he'll be on set, and we'll send you a little <laughs> shout out to you guys. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So, where can everybody follow you? Okay, you can follow me on Instagram at Chris underscore Mormando, and that's M O R M A N D O, and that's where you'll find oh, me. Oh, real quick, real quick. I'll give you your present. 
Oh, got a present. Love presents. The wooden spoon. Chris has his own his spoon. spoon. And I got my own wooden spoon. I'm going to post this later to you awesome. again. Just so you know. More man, though. How great is this? And if my grandmother was alive, she might give me a couple <laughs> of dollars. Love you, Graham. Uh, uh, yeah. The wooden spoon with this guy. He's the best guy ever. Make sure you go out and follow this guy. This guy is awesome. Nico, my brother. Awesome. Chris, I, I can't thank you enough, man. But uh, everybody, definitely go follow Chris. Go watch Gravesend, everything he's been in. Go go through his IMDb, IMDb page. Watch it all. But um, Good stuff. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Ciao. Ciao.